Maybe they've got Dwayne The Rock Johnson featured in the game. They've like properly mapped his face and everything. And he's just gonna come out behind a rock. <laughs> yeah. Just give us his eyebrow. <laughs> okay, we're down here now. That's cool. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> Howdy. The, uh, what's the kind of point in this? If there is one. Doesn't necessarily need to be a point, but usually there's like an item or something, you know? Hmm. It's an alternate reality, that's actually what happens. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Multiverse Miyazaki is a is a diehard fan of the Scorpion King. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just kind of a kind of a environmental um little cool environmental. I guess. There's access to a turtle. So, you know. Instead of Berserk, yeah. It influences the whole direction of the game. Hmm. I'm surprised there was nothing extra there. Oh well. I'm not mad. Just disappointed. <laughs> Hello, little mushroom. Ah. Just had a message. I bet that's to do with. Uh, okay. No, I don't need to deal with that. Have any of you ever played um, the game Pillars of Eternity? At all? I started it recently and then played some more of it yesterday when I actually had some time and um yeah I've been enjoying it it's it's kind of like one of those RPGs you haven't it's uh yeah it's like I guess one of those detailed RPGs I guess CRPG yeah have you do it was interesting it's it's quite enjoying getting into it if I'm honest. I'm enjoying like just sort of getting into the world and stuff. I don't feel like CRPGs typically is a, is a type of game that I've played heaps of but
Oh yeah, yeah, okay. That's how I came across it actually, yeah, from drop from drop frames. Um There was like a big sale on for for the two games that they've made. Um Yeah, well that's it. I, I wanna play Baldur's Gate 3. Um but I feel like I feel like um yeah, I just heard good things about this as well, so I thought, right, I'll I'll give it a go. Were they free on Epic at some point? I just had them wishlisted on Steam and then kind of recently there was like a sale. Oh, it was actually during the Steam summer sale or whatever. I think. And they were like 90% off or something. Because of Avowed being announced. That's what made me curious about the whole series. Um, actually. Ah, no! Fine Crucible Feather Talisman. Sounds cool. Um, improves back steps, but increases damage taken at all times. Improves back steps? A back step is something that you, I basically never use, but there are certain moves that, that you get that are special. So, for example, if you just do a standard R2, that's what it is. Or a standard R1. So let's try a back step first. Is that different? Okay, back step R1 is different. And it's kind of a cool, like, little, you know, fighting style, but I've never really tried it out. Because um, usually you still get hit with stuff, but, um... Uh, where is it? Here. In improves back steps, but increases damage taken. I guess they are further, I think. Are they? That could be cool if we did, and I, I might actually put this on a, on a, on a, run on the run list actually but um you could do like no rolls or so like do backstep only or something be a cool little challenge could try it out i don't know um anyway bg3 is the perfect gateway crpg drug yeah so would you say that that, that um yeah, I do, I do think that that game was probably the most, from what I've seen or heard, it's the most, like, yeah, I suppose the most, like, accessible of them. Um, but still, it's pretty, it's, you know, it still is a CRPG, though. Anyway, yeah, I've been enjoying Pillars, though. I, I feel like it's, uh, yeah, I've been, been enjoying what I've played so far, you know. Snails. Snails! Wait! Snails! Interesting! Maybe some snail lore. Okay. Did you play Pillars Naven or, or just BG3 or...? Have you played a few of those? Style. Ah, okay. So this comes back round. That's fine. Okay, answer this chat. We've just got thin beast bones 
from a snail. How do you make sense of that? Maybe they swallowed a beast? <laughs> Snail is dog in disguise. That's it. That's it. That's the explanation. There is no... There is no better explanation than that, I think. <laughs> oh, God. Perfect, perfect disguise. Nice. Seven. Yeah, yeah, they are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty ransom. Did you ever play, um, Dark Souls 3? Good dodge. Yeah. So it certain is certainly is um reminiscent, right? Of of um of the DLC. Yeah, it's your personal favourite. Such a good game. Man. I was having a chat with a with a mate about this actually because he was saying about how for him, like, Sekiro is his favourite, and. I know, I feel like I've said this before, maybe, on stream, but... The thing with, like, FromSoft is that... I legitimately feel like your favourite game just kind of... changes. Like... At least, like, for me, it's like, you'll play one and you'll be like, Oh, you know what? I really want to play this other game. And you'll just be like, yeah, I think this is my favourite. And then it's like, oh yeah, but, you know, to come to this conversation with my mate, it's like, oh yeah, then there's Sekiro, which has, like, so it's just such a good game. And you're like, of course. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's probably it. And it's like, yeah, but... <sighs> yeah. It just... Hey, you're a crucible knight. One HP in a dream, baby. Give me a second. I want to know how much HP I've actually got. Three. Three HP. That's a bit mean, eh? Oh, wow. Oh my god, that's so cool! That is neat! Holy! Ah, man. Sarah Navens, you said you played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 a bit. Never played Pillars, but you played a bit of Tyranny. What, what, what's Tyranny? I don't know that one. Games like Neverwinter Nights, Dragon Age Origins. Yes, okay, yeah. Yeah.
Would you play three, do you think? Ah, oh, man, that's so cool, isn't it? And how interesting as well what we know about the Crucible and the Beast Horns and the fact that he is Crucible Knight. And he's, he's watching over the ruins as well towards the south. It's so interesting. And I mean, like, look at him. Bloody sick. Right, let's try it with this. Oh, you have played some? Yeah, okay. Come here. Oh, we could parry you, actually. Ah. Uh. Maybe not that. <laughs> I love the, the helmet as well. Okay. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's try... Um, not parrying, I think. I did a lot of Dark Souls 3 last year, actually, Matt. Um, don't... I don't remember if you were around then or not. You might have been. Jesus, man. He's nasty. But I was doing some um, attempts for, for no hit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy. No way, it's such a cool spell. And his poise is almighty. There we go. Whoa. I think you, you might be wrong. You started watching in October last year. Uh, it's funny, and it's a while back now. I don't know. I might have moved on to Elden Ring actually at that point. Like, yeah. I had a couple of issues with the the way my PC ran Dark Souls Three. Just a couple of glitches. Just like random freezes and stuff like that that I was getting that that I struggled with. Especially when you're trying something like a no-hit run, it was quite, quite frustrating. Um, but I will say it was it was so good, like it was so good to play it, like man, like so many times as well. Just really got a good handle on it, you know. Felt good. Um, <clears throat> Devonia's hammer. Great Hammer, oh god. Great Hammer wielded by Devonia, the longest serving of the Crucible Knights. And we've just killed them. A weapon forged of primordial gold, marked by its reddish hue and inhabited by ancient holiness. A torrent of life is engraved upon the striking face. Using the power of the Crucible Vortex, violently spin the hammer around and slam the ground, causing a shockwave. This skill can be charged to increase its power. This sounds wicked. Sounds really good. Um, Just waiting for the DS2 ladle run. <sighs> Nightmare. Nightmare fuel. Um...
hey, I mean, if the points get get met, and it's and it's um, redeemed, then absolutely, I'll be doing it. Um, okay, so Devonia, the longest serving. This is the helm, holds the power of the crucible of life, the primordial form of the Erd tree. And this strengthens aspects of the crucible incantations, which, that, yeah, that's cool actually. It said, Devonia quested in search of the crucible's origin, and departed from the lands of the Erd Tree alone. Ha! Huh. And this is where it brought them. Um. Eight hundred and fifty eight point six K Jesus <laughs> T could really it. yeah. We need we, well yeah, maybe I'll I'll start putting on some bets after we do um maybe after we do uh when we get into some other runs and stuff, maybe we'll start start ramping it up. And then we could uh see those see those points growing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know there's a lot about it, isn't there? There's a lot that kind of... There's little hints of stuff. Which, again... I think it's worth just mentioning, actually, just talking a bit about it now, because... I was thinking... The way, the way they do the lore in this game is, like, almost like, you know... You're just discovering bits about old civilization or, you know, little hints of, of stuff. And it kind of makes sense that it's a little bit vague, you know. But what you can get, you can try and piece together some stuff. It's really interesting. A dryleaf whirlwind represents the pinnacle of Dane's footwork-based martial artistry. Rise into the air with a series of spinning kicks before crashing down with one final strike. Usable on hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Um, but yeah, what we what we do have is um a fair bit about horns, a fair bit about beasts, um how the crucible kind of seem to favour them. The Crucible has a particularly strong influence on the beasts of the Realm of Shadow, causing many to grow horns. Despite the characteristics of their species, we know about horns being representative of that spirituality. Um, some sort of, yeah. But that the Erd Tree seemed to want to kind of crush that. And this is explained here as well, isn't it? The regal omen ban. And when babies born of royalties, royalty don't have their horns excised, but they are kept underground, unbeknownst to anyone, imprisoned for eternity. And we know about how obviously Marika tried to get rid of the horn scent and stuff. So there's there's some really interesting stuff there. I love what the DLC's done so far in terms of completing this this world. Wasn't that what the Dung Eater wanted to do? Uh, the Dung Eater just wanted everybody to to be cursed. Um, and end the whole... Um, you know what? I, I actually was thinking this, Ale, because I wanted to do the Dung Eater's ending. And maybe... I might try and find, um, or maybe once the video is out on YouTube of that stream where we have that final sort of conversation with him, I might, I might try and gather all that together or, or rewatch it or something because, um, that'd be, that'd be cool to see. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it it would be good to kind of rewatch his dialogue. I th I think maybe once we get um 
Maybe once we finish the game or something, if we do the, the cursed ending, then we could look at his dialogue or something like that. Um, just to kind of catch up on it all. Yeah. That's that skill we talked about, a new fist weapon run. Oh, yeah, the one that was on the actual weapon itself. On whichever one it was on. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, it would be good to do a little martial arts, like, kind of run as well. There's loads of different options, isn't there? Okay, Ancient Ruins Cross Message. Is this Leda or Ansbach? Or... No, Ansbach is kind of... He's in the... He was in the library, wasn't he? Message left by Dryleaf Dane addressed to kindred spirits who also pursue Mikola's trail. We found the ceiling tree just ahead, but if we are to burn it, we need the proper kindling. That of Sir Mesmer. Well, I've killed Mesmer, so... Ah, that's kind of interesting then. So if you... Because I could have come here before we fought Mesmer. I believe. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So I guess this is, is, is the way of saying, like, you need to go that way first, so... Hmm. Carved words coalesce. I abandon here the last of the flesh of my body. Ah, hello, Neem. Welcome. How are you? Fine, Toad. Shadow Tree Blessing is now 11. That's good. Better. Uh... I'm... Yes, okay, right. Sorry, before I go on, I do... I... I went round the back and dropped down, and I'm... Somewhat curious as to whether I've missed... I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna run here. I'm going to come back to that, Grace, in a second. I think we need to look at the Crucible Knight armor and stuff as well. Like, just to get a, a better um, overall picture of, of them. Because, yeah, there's some really interesting stuff to do with all of that, right? Yeah, I never actually ran up the main pathway, did I? So... Nor did I parkour up these tree roots. Yeah, Godwin as well, right. Yeah, that is that is true actually, man. That's like a character that Oh blah blah blah. Fine. Yeah. It certainly is, though, plenty of stuff to piece together, you know, ideas, isn't there? I feel like the, the Finger Maiden that's in, um, uh, underground, you know, uh, that says she's, like, mourning his, like, um, the, his death, I suppose. His improper death. Like, I wonder, like, if there is stuff you can piece together with that. You know? Sorry, was that about fear? Doing alright? Overdid it today. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, that sounds, uh, sounds pretty cozy. I 
I do love a good thunderstorm. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I've never really properly uh, thought about that phrase before, but that's a pretty cool phrase. Uh, is this where I've been? I've not been here. Or, ha or have I? Yeah, that was the hidden wall. Yes, then. Right, cool. Cool. Interesting. Okay, I'm uh, I'm satisfied. That is all there is to see up here, I believe. At least for now, it might be that we're able to get up top later on by some other means. I do hope this is the case, as I am enjoying the exploration. Oh, I'm good, yeah. I'm good, thanks. I, um, yeah, I, I got really tired. Like, I had a run of five gigs on the trot like this. Uh, when was it? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And quite a lot of traveling as well. And so, yeah, like, it, it, I knew it would be busy, but at the same time, it's a little bit much, probably. Um, Yesterday I just was a shell of a person. <laughs> I was just kind of like I did nothing. You know, I just I just had my computer in a Steam library and just was like, right, play Brotato and did nothing. And then played Pillars of Eternity and then did nothing. And then you know, it was one of those days, but I was really glad for it. I, I've, you know, I do feel better today. Um, you just need that rest, don't you? Got to get the rest in. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. What is this? <laughs> okay. Jeez. Someone's got a point to prove. That's so cool, actually. I love that. That is absolutely wicked. It looks incredible. Uh, let me just get safe a second. Ah, oh, shit, I didn't mean... Yeah, sorry, I was saying I reckon there's a lot of similarities, and, and yeah, I understand. It's your social energy, isn't it? It just completely gets wiped, you know? Like that social battery or whatever. Um... 
Yeah. I missed it. Do it again. Ah, oh, man. That was so neat. Like, that vortex. Hello, Owl. Oh, wrong. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Of course. I think it's good, though. I think it's important as well to know how you get your energy back, you know, and, and I knew for me, like, I really couldn't, I was not great company, if, you know, I just was like, I need to just, you know, have that, have that, you know, recharge time and stuff. Um, yeah, especially through the summer, it just, it becomes pretty full on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Still, it was good. It was good. Um, I did... It, yeah. The last gig was... <laughs> yeah, there, there were quite a few people who got a bit blary. Uh, and ended with one guy... At the end of the night, after he had finished playing and the music was stopped, sat on a chair looking very, um, queasy for a fair while. <laughs> yeah. Poor chap. Didn't, didn't end too great for him. Yeah. You can see his queasiness all over the floor. <laughs> ah, dear. Oh, man. Honestly, we were just like, yeah, okay. It was good, it was good that it was at the end of the night. Like, everybody was leaving and stuff, but my lord. They'd all had a good time, though, you know. It was... It's what, a, what a way to end the run. Um, I'm just wondering, I need to open that spirit spring somehow so we can deal with this guy. I reckon it's probably up above there, or, or maybe that's where we have to get to. The way to open it up is going to be around here somewhere. That's for sure. So you have to get through here. And that's... I thought this was... Hmm. It was a guest, yeah, it was a guest. A wedding guest. You'd like to see something neat with the spirit spring. Is this... Ah. Is this a different kind of one? Or something? Sure, sure, Matt. Tell, tell me, tell me something neat about it. Yeah, strange. Normally, you there's like a. Uh, you come here.
Use one of the shackles. Uh, I tell you what, we don't need to do that. No way. No way. How did... How? How was that ever found out? Also, Alira, sorry, this does actually say about cursed people called the Omen. I don't know if that is the same as... as the... the curse that the... um... Dung Eater talks of, but I imagine it's probably linked, isn't it? Um, this just says the reviled curse uh, will last eternally, and the world's children, grandchildren, and every generation hence will be its postules. If order is defiled entirely, defilement is defilement no more. And through every curse, a cursed blessing. No, he's more like Brummy, isn't he? Yeah, how how did anyone find that out? I know, I wonder. I know, that's true. I just wonder if it's like... Yeah. Like, why would he want to curse everyone? Hmm. I mean, it's it's really, it's a really strange thing, and you'd never really think to use the shackles, because you've, you've not... Oh, there's a giant archer up there. You've not, um, had to use them since, you know fighting Margit or Moog. And even then, you don't have to use them. Like, they're just things which tend to stay in the inventory, you know? Yeah, yeah, quite convoluted, but it's a, it's a cool little surprise, for sure. Um, actually, it's Matt. Could, could you tell me, do you happen to know if that is what you have to do with this one? Or is there one of those um you know, other vents that you can use to unlock it. It does some cool stuff in nearly all the dungeons. Honestly. I've never thought to use the shackle outside of the fight, outside of the boss fight. Ever. Hmm. There's a way down there, look, and it looks like maybe there's another spirit spring that we can use to get up here or something. Shackles. Holy shit, no way. No way. I never knew that. Turns the fire pillars on and off? What? What do, what do you mean? I have never known this. That is insane. Do you have to use it, like, on top of it? Like, so in other words, is it the contact that raises it? Or can you use it just in the vicinity?
You can use it anywhere in the cave or anywhere in the dungeon. Every day's a school day. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. I never knew that. Me and Varuma are just going to be like... <laughs> tearing through the dungeons now, just going... Use it again! Again! I bind you! Yeah, it's really cool, yeah. I'm just curious why... Like, how that would become knowledge, like... It may have been leaked. Right, okay. I feel like it would have been. Yeah, there's no description. Unless, if, if there's anything in the DLC that says about it that we don't have, like, don't spoil anything, so don't don't reveal that. But if, if it is that, you know, truly there is no actual other... other, um, descriptions or anything, then, uh, then yeah. Been a thing in the base game for a while. Yeah, no, I. Yeah, fair enough. Well, man, that's so cool. I have never known that. And look at us now. All the richer for it. Don't you dare. Drink, drink, drink. Nah, bastard. Oh, bugger. I can't see. Where did that other dog come from? <laughs> ah, shit. It's a blood snail. Ah, damn it. Whatever. <laughs> blood snail. Ah, uh, where even was that? What? Someone in Co's chat just mentioned it and it... Wow, dude. That's insane. Alright, let's go this way. Everyone's just chucking those bouncing balls. Nice. Entirely different way this time. What? But that's
I don't remember getting this grace. It costs 5,000 bucks. Wait. F yeah, from... Uh Yeah, Margaret Shackle, right? Divine bird feathers. Spread arms like wings and release a flurry of feathers. Uh, hey, that's like the death birds thing, right? The technique of the divine bird warriors, the very first of all horned warriors, wielded as an incantation. Spread the arms wide like wings to release a flurry of feathers. This incantation can be cast while in motion. Hold to continue releasing feathers. The divine bird warriors, and indeed this technique, are said to bear resemblance to the golden crucible. Oh, patches, that's it. Yeah. Um. I, I don't remember where it was, but I saw a um, description, it might have been armor or something, that talked about. Um, people who maybe worshipped the golden bird, like the divine bird, or lived under the divine bird, or something like that. And we're hearing more and more about it. And these divine bird warriors apparently are like... The very first of all horned warriors. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm truly I my bearings have gone. I was over there. I don't remember getting this grace. I'm going to I'm going to go back to where I was and clear up all that side first before we before we do anything else. Um right. Just bear with me a couple minutes guys. I'm just going to be right back, okay? One second. I, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna make a tea or a coffee or something, so, yeah, be right back. 